Hi hey guys, it's Avengel. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're taking a look at FS Reborn by Flight Sim Technologies Sting S4. It's the Czech built ultralight kit plane that is LSA, of course. So we're talking 600 kilo max weight takeoff and with a horizontal kind of max flight speed of about 120 knots, store speed of 43 knots, and a VNE of 153 to be precise. Two seats side by side with a forward positioned Rotax 912. Trike gear, carbon fibre built. So, but it's actually not a kit plane, sorry. It is actually the competitor in speed to the Sting RG, which is a retractable one, which goes a little bit faster, of course. And it's a sport slash travel LSA aircraft. Now, this aircraft from FS Reborn, of course, includes really cool features. Like, it actually has an in-depth engine modeling system in here so this is of course an aircraft in that ballpark uh, so we have a fuel management a fuel control system engine control system wear and tear on brakes engine all the different features of the aircraft itself and you can perform maintenance of course with this and it has a built-in little tablet that also acts as where you can find most of the manual information not that it's a particularly complex aircraft now this aircraft is small but full of features now Price-wise, it's I please be kind to me here. I forget it's on the marketplace, so you can look yourself. I believe it's between fifteen and twenty pounds. I don't remember, and I can't find the price. But it wasn't more than that. Now I paid for this myself, and I don't feel like this is a bad purchase because it's also the first aircraft in flight sim with the ballistic rescue system, a ballistic parachute that can save the aircraft like a lot of other aircraft in real life do now as well. This has a functioning one, which we'll show you in flight. But it also uses the new um, body physics for flight sim, which if you give me a moment to remember the exact wording of this, it's the computational fluid dynamics, the new system from SFS, and it's new prop physics. So we'll get to see all that in action. So it comes with 11 liveries, which are rather cool. And... The aircraft comes with, as we look around here, at one of those 11 liveries. Again, carbon fiber exterior, so not a ton of detail we can really look at. Tie down point, more tie down point, propeller, which has an automatic governing system as well if you want to use that. Now you'll see, you can't actually see them when it's painted normally. Once the chute's been deployed, you'll notice some lines in the body where the cables have actually pulled out of. And there's the bit to break the rear glass and where the chute will deploy from. So you'll see that when we do it. Trust me. It actually has a whole animation system it uses for that, which is very cool. Now, looking inside the aircraft, this is where I quite like it. This is very cool. Um, the texturing is nice. Canopy, of course, works. Our EFB is there. Texturing is very good. I quite like this. It's not overly complicated, but it's also a simple, small aircraft. So... It's kind of hard to screw it up, if I'm honest. How's the model to catch? Not okay. It actually, it's more complicated than just a couple of polygons. One thing that bothers me is this line here. This jagged line is actually a result of a ambient occlusion layer in the texturing process, which has not been tidied up, which kind of bothers me as a texture artist, but otherwise isn't a big deal. Now, of course, down here we have the automatic prop governing. We have control for the actual auto, auto prop pitch, heating and engine choke, which is useful if you need it. And as you'll see here on both sides, we can control the rudder position. Great for real life and a nice feature to see the model for the depth, just like heated seat. Uh-huh. Yeah, we can have a heated seat. So down here in our EFB, we have, of course, got full control over things like prop co a pitot cover, which will show up on the diagram when it's on, just like chocks. Control for electrics, fuel and payload, engine and landing gear, wear and tear. Maintenance page, fuel and payload, control of those. FAQs, where you can get most of your questions you may have about the aircraft answered, built into the tablet, so no popping in and out of the sim. And units of measure, the ability to use the PMS-50 natively, or a built-in Garmin screen. I'll use that, thank you. And uh, 
you can use the TDS with a mod that's available on their web and their Discord, I believe. We're in chair speed and a ballistic rescue system cinematic camera. You'll want that one, trust me. So let's put this away. Let's get her started up, shall we? You'll notice the actual heated seat thing has a level of heated seat. Depending on how much I click it, it's off now. So we've got our PMS 50 there. Fuel is already on. Check that. We are good there. Clear prop. Okay, we're good to go. Is my head going to behave itself today? Turns out my battery might have been low. Who knew that was a feature? Turns out you actually have to replace them occasionally. That's me, not the system. So we're going to taxi out. I'm not going to use flaps to take off because it's an LSA. It's got a Rotax in here. It's not heavy. I shouldn't need it. Not on this runway. So visibility is fantastic. Night lighting is really limited to your instruments. It's a simple LSA. Weight is saved. Um, the instruments are backlit, so you're pretty much good. So I'm not going to show you that because it's basically just the instruments. Now, in terms of the rain effects, they do show. And they show just as well as on any aircraft. So again, I'm not going to change the weather to show you that. Because we all know what the rain looks like on the stock aircraft. Alright, let's get ourselves onto the runway here at Orcas Island. For those who keep asking, this is uh, Orbex's Orcas Island. It's the one I always use for my reviews. So let's go to full power here. Pull about the prop pitch slightly just so I don't overspeed the engine too much. And our speed comes up and we come off the runway nicely. So I'll keep my power on here for climb. Just a little bit. I'm actually going to pull it back slightly here because I don't need to go too high or too fast. And this thing's very slippery. It's small, it's light, it's carbon fiber. So it's incredibly slippy. Now obviously there's no windows to open in flight so you can't really experience the wind sound but You'll notice a sound difference when you pop the canopy on the ground. So there is definitely a difference there. The aircraft looks very pretty in flight. It's very streamlined. And I think it looks proportionally nice. I've compared a number of aircraft to the uh, VL3. This is like a non-retractable version, honestly, in terms of its appearance. I do like it, and I think it's a pretty aircraft. And for its speed, it's not bad. So I'm going to definitely pull more power out here. Now, of course, we can actually put in the automatic governing there and you'll watch it immediately take control and drop the numbers it'll go up and down and catch it so as I pull my power out you will see it drop but not a lot as the RPM is actually coming down it's drifting back in fact, we'll leave it off as we're in the pattern here we are just going to do a touch and go today because I want to go and show you the BRS so not very useful if I'm on the ground right so I'm pulling my power early here because this is very slippery. How does she slip? I'm going to get a lot of speed doing this, I think. It doesn't forward slip very well. It's not got a ton of rudder authority. It will side slip well, but it doesn't forward slip well because I'm not getting a ton of movement on the rudder. I get some, but it's it doesn't want to kick around as hard as some aircraft. So we'll keep ourselves there. Runway is in sight behind our shoulder. Now I'm noticing an FPS hit. Now, it doesn't have any additional gauges that the WASDOM coding can mess with, like in SimWorks aircraft, which is a, a Sobo code thing, rather than it being them. Um, I beta test for them, so I do know it's actually a code issue not something they can control. You can always pop the circuit breaker and you're fine. Um, which is what I do. Now this aircraft, we'll give it a notch of flaps here for this approach. Keep our speed relative here. This doesn't. This only has three panels and I've got other aircraft that use these exact instruments. Working title, G3X, uh, G3I and the PMS. So it, it's not them per se. I'm not sure what it actually is. I'm going to make an educated assumption that it's back-end coding to do with the persistent state functionality the way they've done it. I don't know that, but that would be my educated guess as to what is causing performance loss. Because an aircraft this simple and small shouldn't have issues 
with performance. So 43 is our stall speed. We're about 55 right now. I'm going to keep it relatively safe here. We'll come in, we'll touch and go, we'll turn around, and we will deploy the BRS. Now, for a reasonable price and good systems depth, which I think is becoming something we expect in MSFS these days, unless it's something very unusual. I've gained a lot of speed here. Let's burn this off. Will it let me ditch some now? That's a lot of drifting. I'm going left to right here. This is a real test sometimes when aircrafts behave. Yeah. Okay, you have to go around. Looks like we're not doing a touch and go because I'm an idiot. <laughs> and this is my third time recording this because something has gone wrong in every recording. I will treat that as I caught a gust and I had to catch it and I've gone around. Um, we'll come back and we'll do another one. And in fact, wind is calm today. So I'm going to do a uh, key head or a mushroom turn. Or whatever you want to call those turns where you basically swing out wide, bring it round and put it back in the way you came in. Because there's no controller here to yell at me, so I can land however I like. Hammerhead? No, that's aerobatic. I've always called them a mushroom, personally. We don't need a ton of room here, but I want to keep my speed down. Flaps are not full, they're at our first of two stages. tight turning circle for a small plane, which is very nice. It will really turn around. This is impressively actually tight. So we've had a go around from asymmetric flight. We've had tight turn and we've got our approach here. We're off center line, which we'll correct now. And I'm picking up speed again. It's very slippery. I don't want to go full flaps because I know I'm going for a, a touch and go here. So we are speeding up on approach. I'm just going to let it bring its nose down. We'll touch down partway along the runway. Then we'll go back to full power. Yeah, it's really slippery. But I would suspect the actual aircraft is quite slippery too. A lot more modern streamlined aircraft do really want to flaps up. Do really want to actually not lose speed. You like, Look at the vans. You really have to work to lose speed in those things. So we're flying along, and uh, everything's going great. Then all of a sudden, I lost fuel. Oh, that stopped really quickly. Oh, crap. I'm not going anywhere to land here. Meep. Oh, yeah. Cinematics. That's a thing. Look at that. That is so cool. Oh, we're coming in quick. And it's quarters now. Okay, it's quarters. As we're coming towards a beautiful FS road. So should I have nowhere to go around? Like, this would be a perfect place. If I lost power on a go around there, I have nowhere to go. Now, we are going to end up in the water, of course. But that could be a lot worse. As our chute even drops away. That is El Nito. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. So, what do I think of this aircraft? Well, I think it's a fun little plane. It's got a cool little feature. The behavior of the aircraft in flight is actually kind of what I would expect of a plane of this type. I have no time on Rotaxes, so I can't comment on the engine behavior. But it's a light, streamlined, small aircraft that's low weight. I'd expect it to be slippery. And I would expect it to be struggling to lose speed. Now, that does mean you have to really plan your approach and have the speed off before you get there, unlike what I was doing, because I'm trying to keep my reviews to a reasonable time. The BRS is cool. The prop behavior seems realistic in terms of what I would expect, and the controls and systems function nicely. For a rather bargain price, it's kind of chock full of features, and the kind of price I'd expect of something complex, but this small if that makes sense. Now, please give me a cub or a super cub. Actually, give me a super cub with this amount of features in it and I'm yours for life. I'd say this is a buy. 
if you're into GA aircraft, this is a good one for your list. It's not the Just Fight Pipers. It's not the Milvis uh, 310. But it's a systems depth LSA for a nice sightseeing plane with great visibility. Seems like a winner. Thanks for watching, guys. And my feet are quite wet now. Bye.